Hello and welcome to this fourth and final part of the personal statement series. I really hope you have found the previous videos on personal statements and breaking down each individual paragraph really useful. In this video, again, we're gonna have Ollie, personal statement expert and co-founder of UniRise, talking us through a few key do's and don'ts from his research talking to hundreds of universities all over the country slash world. And I will be handing over to him in just a second, but before we do, hit that subscribe button if you want weekly videos Thursdays at 5 p.m. on how to boost your grades, get into the university of your dreams and build the future you desire. All right, here's Ollie. Right, we're going to jump into the final part, which is the don'ts. Okay. So again, examples of real personal statements. I'm just going to go through the things that we see every day and it's like, don't do it. Some of them we've already seen. So number one, don't list. This student is applying for medicine and they're just listing, I read that book and then I read this book. All of these gave me a strong insight. Again, you're just listing books you read, you're not reflecting on it. You're not saying, reading Adam Kay's, this, oh no, reading This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay, um, you know, forced me to reflect on what it's actually like being a doctor, which, um, which was different or, or contradictory to what I read in this book over here, uh, which showed me this. This forced me to reflect on the reality of medicine where it's so blah, 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 blah. I don't know what this book's about, so I don't want to pretend like I do, but either way, you're engaging it in a much deeper way. Second thing, we see this all the time. Don't use fancy language. They want something that's authentic and new. And often, because so many agencies, you they charge thousands of pounds for, to write your statement for you. Whenever they smell a hint of this probably is too fancy, they think that you're cheating. Um, which is really bad for you. Okay. So here's an example of something that sounds great. Geography t transcends disciplinary boundaries and, you know, interrogates the extent to which globalization is indeed. It's like, you don't talk like that. Who says indeed? Yeah. Who says indeed? <laughs> and like, you know, again, you would in an academic essay sometimes maybe, yeah. but this isn't an academic essay to, a lot of people just use, a lot of uh, teachers tell students to use a thesaurus. Sure. And unless it's for words like you get, you shouldn't be using a thesaurus because the point is that you want it to sound like you. Really, the student's saying nothing here. They're basically saying geography includes lots of disciplines and then this book asks if globalization is good or bad. Yeah. Um, and somewhere in between what I just said and, so, and this is, is ideal. Brilliant. But the classic words we always see are like manifest, utilize, thus or hence. It's like, why are you saying thus? It's, no, it's we like, love them. anyone said you know, that. But this elucidates is always used it's like why don't you just say this shows or this demonstrates or this seems or something like that yeah. and then indeed it's like stop using indeed it's 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 kind of it doesn't sound right yeah and often like the when it when if it sounds too fancy then it's probably not a very strong personal statement don't pretend you're an expert um we see some students like they make bold claims a new school of politics must be born Again, you're you're a kid and you haven't studied this stuff properly and you might have your own views on Trump and that's fine, but the people reading this know a lot more than you and they know that it's far more complex than you want, than anything that you can believe. You know, the only way to save our democracy is through universal basic income. Okay, sure. Probably not true. And whether, I mean, I don't know, but your professor will probably have a different opinion than you. So this is quite, it comes across as quite arrogant. And we see this particularly in the social sciences, students wanting to impress by having a new theory of how you know to have a flourishing society and again it's like you don't really know do you so don't Is, pretend like you do i'm guessing i'm guessing that they're not necessary and correct me if i'm wrong ollie i'm just speaking out loud but they're not looking for someone with really really strongly formed views they're looking for someone who can be open to changing their views and learning new things yeah they're looking for someone who um yeah is willing to like go into the detail and evaluate different things. But if you've got the answers, if you've already got the solution, then don't come and study economics with us because you clearly know your stuff. Go and solve it. Um, so yeah, they're not looking for anyone with, you know, the whole point of uni is you go and you get challenged. And if you don't finish university with different views than when you started, you, you might not have uh, been challenging yourself quite enough. Yeah. Number four, don't use cliches. This is this is just like the number one thing ever since i can remember i've wanted to be an architect i'm deeply passionate about this 
so you know so many people say ever since i've born i've always born i've wanted to do this which is like definitely not the case because you know when you were born you didn't want to be an architect you were like born and couldn't think about architecture um and the word passionate just comes up thousands of times it just gets so annoying so don't use cliches like that um that's really it on that one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the final one is don't make grammar mistakes it sounds obvious but we saw one back up there um here it's, it's not even really basic ones but here the student says i did this experience i come in contact with the various they should have used the past tense and here they said in the insuring it's just like ah oh, you've shown to the admissions tutor that you're not willing to even put the time to perfect your one page yeah how are you going to be able to do like all of these essays or assignments to a high quality yeah, yeah. and for your viewers if they want they can try and spot all the grammar mistakes here i think there's like seven or eight grammar mistakes in just these three sentences um and you know in the comments they can write down what they think they are but these are mistakes that aren't so obvious but lots of students use in their personal statements mm -hmm. things like it's and it's and apostrophes being in the wrong place and, and, and things like that so yeah don't make grammar mistakes when this is like one of the most important one page documents you're going to write in your life. And if you like what you heard from Ollie, then I think you're going to love his company UniRise and the course that they've made on how to write an amazing personal statement. Again, everything they talk about is research based. It's not just general wisdoms. They're not just making it up. So if that sounds interesting, I'm going to put a link in the description below. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Next week, we are going to be looking more at some study skills and tips because I know a lot of you have your mocks coming up. Let me know in the comments below what you thought this video and any other videos you want to see in the future. I answer to every single comment that comes in. Until next time, see you later.